Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab and today we are checking out one of the first PCI Express 5 SSDs to market which is the Corsair MP700. This thing is rated at 10 gigabytes a second read and write speeds. Absolutely crazy numbers which are around 3000 megabytes a second faster than even the very fastest PCI Express 4 SSDs out there. So we're going to be putting this thing through some benchmarks today to see just what it means in terms of game load times and sequential throughput and we are also going to be seeing what you actually need to cool it is your motherboard heatsink going to be enough do you need a heatsink at all or do you actually need to invest in something much larger to actually cool this thing and stop it throttling because as we know pci express 5 ssds have been predicted to run pretty hot. We're expecting even hotter, faster running ones to arrive over the next 12 months as well. So we'll be checking all of that out today in this video. First though, a word from our sponsor. Our sponsor today is scdkey.com where right now you can get great deals on software such as Windows 10, Windows 11 and Microsoft Office. And even better is I've got a 25% discount code to share with you guys. Windows 10 Professional, for example, which is fully upgradable for free to Windows 11. All you have to do is click buy now, enter the code CRT25 into the promotion code box, click apply, and the US price will drop from $22.09 down to just $16.57, and in the UK, you'll see the price fall to just £12.79. Once you've paid, head over to your order page, click the get key button, and copy your Windows key code. When you're in Windows, you want to move your mouse over to the Start button, right click, go to Settings, then Update and Security, and then move up to Activation, and finally click on Change your product key, copy and paste your brand new product key into the box, click Next, then click Activate, and your Windows 10 installation is now activated. You can do the exact same thing with Office 2021 Professional, CRT25, click Apply, and you will see a hefty discount. Thanks again to SCD Key for sponsoring today's video. So the first thing you'll need to know with the MP700 is that you need a PCI Express 5 compatible M.2 slot, and not all motherboards out there have them, even if you have a modern one for, for example, AMD's Socket AM5 or Intel's LGA1700. So you will need to check your motherboard's manual or its product page on its website to see if it is actually going to offer the MP700 a home that is going to offer you the rated speeds of 10 gigabytes a second or more. So definitely check that because there are lots of motherboards out there that do not support PCI Express 5 on the um, M.2 slots and that goes for AMD motherboards as well. Most AMD motherboards, especially of the B650 and X670 chipsets uh, do support it, but there are some variations of B650 models out there that do not support PCI Express 5 on anything other than the PCI Express uh, slot rather than M.2. So make sure you get out there, check your motherboard manual or the product page to make sure first before you reach for your wallet that you're actually going to be able to run this thing at its rated speeds. In terms of specifications, the MP700 currently only ships in two terabyte form, which is the model that we are reviewing today, but we are fully expecting Corsair to ship in other capacities too, such as one terabyte and four terabyte, as will other manufacturers that are either using this controller or a slightly similar one. In terms of endurance ratings, we have an, a TBW or terabyte written rating of 1400, which is pretty decent. And that is backed up by a five year warranty, which is going to be enough for most of us out there. So in terms of other things, we've got the Fizon E26 controller under the hood, which is going to be dishing out those 10 thousand megabyte a second speed specifically we've got a read speed of up to 10,000 megabytes a second and a write speed of 9,500 megabytes a second with 1500 IOPS and 1700 IOPS on the random read and write respectively now in terms of throttling temperatures Corsair has specified a specific throttling temperature of 76 degrees C so if your SSD matches that or goes above it you're going to see speeds reduced and that's not really what you want given that you've already paid a premium for this thing in the first place so something that we're going to be looking at in the benchmarking later on is just what temperatures we hit with our test motherboard which was an asus rog strix z790 gaming wi-fi and that motherboard has a pretty decent m.2 heatsink which has like a big heat pipe going through it and is um, pretty decent performing uh, when I last tested it with some PCI Express 4 SSDs. So 
that's going to be something that you'll need to uh, take on board and just make sure that you have adequate cooling but as I said we'll be discussing that more at the end of this video so let's crack on with the performance data so first up we have the sequential numbers from Crystal Disk Mark and here the Corsair MP700 shows what it's made of with read and write speeds of over 10,000 megabytes a second. So the MP700 pretty much living up to the hype here and offering numbers close to 3,000 megabytes a second faster than the best PCI Express 4 SSDs out there, namely the WD Black SN850X, the Samsung 990 Pro, Solidime P44 Pro and Kingston Fury Renegade. The random 4K with 16 threads and a Q depth of 32 was also a win for the MP700, although with slimmer margins over the likes of the Kingston Fury Renegade and Solidime P44 Pro, with the latter coming pretty close to matching the read speed in this situation. The random 4K single Q depth, single thread result wasn't amazing for the MP700, although it was still able to match the Samsung 990 Pro and Kingston Fury Renegade, but both the Solidime P44 Pro and WD Black SN850X were both a little bit faster on the write speed. So when we looked at the Solidime P44 Pro, it was a very, very fast SSD and it just proves just how fast it was in this test because it manages to beat the Corsair by some noticeable margins here in the 3 d Mark game load time performance test. Uh, but the Corsair MP700 did manage to beat the rest of the field convincingly, including the WD Black SN850X, Samsung 990 Pro and Kingston Fury Renegade. So it's nearly a win here for the Corsair MP700 and it's still a very, very fast SSD overall. But the cheaper Solidime P44 Pro was noticeably quicker. Our final test then is the 3 d Mark game access time in microseconds. And here we have again Battlefield 5, Call of Duty Black Ops 4 and Overwatch included in the testing and once again the Corsair came a very very close second to the Solidime P44 Pro and had a noticeable advantage over the WD Black SN850X, the Samsung 990 Pro and the Kingston Fury Renegade. So again the much much cheaper Solidime P44 Pro offering a little bit extra performance for a lot less cash in these real world tests. So moving on to temperature testing then, and firstly I have a warning to anyone out there that is considering using this SSD without a heatsink. My answer to you is don't, because when I did it purely for the purposes of this test, I would never recommend anyone else doing this. The temperature peaked at 85 degrees C and then the SSD completely disappeared from Windows. So I had to restart my PC, I had to remove the SSD, let it cool down, put it back in again, and only then did it actually reappear in Windows. So kind of a catastrophic failure there, which um, definitely is not going to be one I'm going to be repeating. So definitely use a heatsink with this SSD. Now, the other issue I had is that the small M.2 heatsink, a third party heatsink that I got from Amazon for a future heatsink group test, uh, that actually peaked at 82 degrees C. And while it didn't completely fail, when I ran my stress test, which involved a single run of, Cine, of Crystal Disk Mark, which is not particularly strenuous, um, it, that lasts like a minute or two, even just doing that and then rerunning the sequential results resulted in speeds that were pretty much half that of what the SSD should be doing. So even a small M.2 heatsink, which cools both sides of the SSD, resulted in the speeds basically being catastrophically throttled. Now the only way you're going to get out of the throttling zone is to use a larger heatsink and the large heatsink on the ASUS motherboard that I was using did just that but it still got to a peak of 74 degrees Celsius and that's only two degrees away from throttling. So if you're going to be throwing some serious workloads at this thing and dealing with you know throwing gigabytes of data around on a regular basis and putting the SSD under prolonged stress loads then I would highly recommend going for a much larger heatsink and uh, I used a large thermal right heatsink here in this test and the temperature was kept below 60 degrees which is 16 degrees lower than the throttling temperature so there is a link to that SSD in the description below and you can pick it up it's pretty reasonably priced as well it's about 10 or 15 dollars 
and that will completely solve the problem of this SSD throttling. So when other uh, review sites I've seen that have reviewed this SSD already, they've said, oh, you know, it's fine in your motherboard's heatsink. I would argue it is not. You're going to be getting very, very close to throttling temperatures if you put high loads on the uh, SSD over a long period of time, like more than a minute or so. You typically won't be doing that in games. It will be kind of going up to peak and then going back down again. But another thing that is going to help is if you have a decent airflow in your case, that will certainly help especially if it's kind of directed in the area of the uh, M.2 SSD. So that's something to bear in mind as well. So overall here, we've got the temperature results that show a clear difference between using even a small S uh, SSD heatsink and a much larger one or a large one on your motherboard. Now, moving on to the actual speed tests that we saw from these results, we've got the large motherboard heatsink and the large M.2 heatsink pretty much coping with that stress test. Now, um, the large motherboard heatsink obviously getting pretty close to throttling um, after the stress test, which uh, was just a couple of minutes long. But the uh, when I used no heatsink, as you can see here, the only result I got was within the first couple of seconds um, after the SSD basically froze. Um, and then I didn't get any other results after that. It basically froze and crystal disk mark um, just didn't record any other data. So that test is a fail. And I would again reiterate, do not use this SSD, this SSD without a heatsink. Even if you do use a small heatsink, and this sadly will probably apply to a lot of motherboards, uh, motherboard heat sinks as well. If you use a small one, you're probably going to still see this SSD throttling because when I used a, a fairly small uh, third party heat sink I got off Amazon, as you can see here, the results saw the read speed drop from around 10,000 megabytes a second all the way down to 3,000 and the write speed even worse at 2,000 megabytes a second. So you're going to seriously need to look at the thermals of your SSD to make sure that your cooling is sufficient or just make sure you, that your motherboard has a very large uh, heat sink that is maybe dedicated to cooling PCI Express 5 SSDs. A lot of them are out there on, mother, on modern motherboards and some motherboards have even included optional heat sinks included in the box to actually deal with these kind of heat loads as well for future SSDs, specifically like the one that we're dealing with here. So yeah, that's uh, basically my conclusion here is make sure that this SSD is cooled properly. And we will also be doing a group test of M.2 heat sinks in the very near future to see which ones cool the SSDs much more. Um, and we will also be doing a future group test of M.2 SSDs to see which are the ones that you should be buying. So what do we make of the Corsair MP700 then? Well, first and foremost, you need to make sure that you are going to be able to cool this thing effectively because there are lots of heat sinks out there, both included on motherboards and third party heat sinks that are not up to the task, even dealing with very short term workloads. And if you're planning on hammering this thing, throwing, you know, many tens or hundreds of gigabytes at it and keeping it under load for sustained periods, then you are going to need to really up your game and be careful with the temperatures to stop it throttling and seeing those speeds kind of destroyed and getting uh, basically speeds that are barely a third of what the rated speeds are because the drive is basically throttled because it's got too hot. So uh, a lot of people out there are saying that temperatures aren't really an issue with this SSD. I would argue that they're not so long as you cool it properly with the right cooling and that means getting a decent enough heatsink. Now the small third party heatsink that we looked at here in the video proved not really to be enough. You absolutely need to use a heatsink as well because if you don't provide any extra cooling then the, ba the drive basically freezes and you'll probably lose data or worse. So you absolutely need to have adequate cooling there and I can't stress that enough with this SSD and probably all other PCIe 5 SSDs as well. Now, it might sound like scaremongering, but to see the effects in my system with those dry, with the speeds more than cut in half, in fact, they were pretty much cut by a third, that is definitely going to pose an issue. So heat sinks that I can recommend if you're not sure whether your motherboard is going to be big enough are ones like the uh, Thermalrite uh, 2, uh, 2280 Pro. So it's a very affordable heatsink. I will put the link in the description below. And this one basically kept this SSD below 60, uh, 60 degrees, which is 16 degrees away 
from its throttling temperature. So there will be no problems with that heatsink at all. And also the uh, larger motherboard heatsinks out there should be okay, but there's quite a bit of variance in terms of performance and size, etc. The one on my Asus uh, ROG Strix motherboard, which is, de which is primarily for cooling PCIe 5 SSDs, just about proved okay, but I would be wary of using that uh, or this SSD on that motherboard for sustained workloads. But again, as I mentioned in the performance analysis, if you have uh, directed airflow at the M.2 SSD, that should really help keep those temperatures down, um, especially if you can direct one of your front case fans towards the M.2 uh, SSD area on your motherboard. So in terms of whether this SSD is actually worth it in terms of money, well, everything depends on how much you want those speeds. If you are just willy waving and you just wanna get the fastest SSD out there to show off to your mates, or you just want the fastest SSD right now because you're building a new rig, sure, go ahead, splash out $290 and you'll see some insane speeds in your benchmarks. You probably won't notice the difference in anything outside of sequential workloads. So if you're transferring lots of data around, especially large files, you will see a benefit of this SSD over even the best PCI Express 4 SSDs, but certainly over SSDs that are only churning out, you know, maybe one, uh, one to 2,000, maybe 3,000 megabytes a second. So some of the older PCI Express 3 SSDs out there, if you're upgrading from one of those to one of these, you'll definitely notice the difference in quite a few areas. But the premium that you have to pay for this SSD is quite significant and for a hundred dollars less you can get a pretty decent PCI Express 4 SSD which can still dish out five to six thousand megabytes a second but you can get a two terabyte one for a heck of a lot less than this SSD here and if you want to save even more cash then go for some of the fantastic deals out there on two terabyte SSDs and I put some of them in the, in the description below as well so this is undoubtedly an insanely fast SSD but you pay a premium and you will also need to make sure you cool it properly so you see those rated speeds. So I'd like to thank Corsair for sending the uh, MP700 over today. We'll be doing lots more testing with SSDs and cooling and hopefully some more PCI Express 5 SSDs here in future as well. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you soon.